السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ ان this ocean of Christianity, South Africa, where I come from, we are que asked numerous questions. Like, for example, they would like to know what is the relationship between Islam and the other religions. We say, and rightly so, that Islam is not a new religion. It is actually a continuation of the teachings of Moses, Hazrat Musa, salam, and Jesus, Hazrat Isa, salam, brought to perfection. And in that, we say that Islam is Judaism made universal. We claim a unique relationship among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. With them, we claim a unique relationship. That Islam is Judaism made universal. Is the teaching of Moses, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made universal. The Jew says that God Almighty is absolutely unique. He has no partners, he has no sons. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And we give our hand of exceptions to the Jew that we believe as we believe. The Jew says, no eating of the flesh of swine. We say, we won't eat it. He says, no eating of blood. We say, we won't touch it. He says, no, sir, he says circumcision. We say, we are circumcised. What more do you want? We would say that Islam is Judaism made universal. And we also claim a unique relationship with the Christian in this that Islam is also is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. We say that we believe that Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, the Messiah, translated Christ. We say we believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. A miracle of God. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. The only real difference between us and the Jew is, we say, is political. With the Jew is political. The Muslim and the Jew are fighting for a piece of land. We say, my brother, the Arab, he says Palestine belongs to him. The Jew says Palestine belongs to him. Both my brothers and my cousins are fighting for a piece of land. It has something to do with politics. It has got nothing to do with race. It has got nothing to do with religion. I am speaking to my South African audience. This is how I present my case. With the Christian, we are the closest in what I have just mentioned now. His birth, his position, his status, his miracle. The only point of real difference is that we say he is not God Almighty in human form and he is not God incarnate and is not the begotten son of God. These are the points of real difference. Otherwise, the Quran, the manner, the nobility in which it describes the birth of Jesus in the Holy Quran, we read in Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 42, ya Maryamu. So behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna Allah astafaki, that God Almighty has chosen thee and purified thee. Chosen thee above the women of all nations. Ya Maria Mukmuti li Rabbiki wasjudi warka ima arraqeen. So, O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly. Prostrate thyself and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. Zalika min ambai la ghaibi nuhihi ilayka. That this is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle, by inspiration, and so on. In these verses, when it is read to them, to the non-Muslim, especially the Christian, and more especially the Roman Catholic, an amazing thing happens. When we read the Quranic Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and give its translation, the effect that it produces on the listener, we see their eyes well up with tears. And they can't seem to believe their ears because they have been programmed from childhood into thinking, into believing that we Muslims are the Antichrist, that we are the enemies of Hazrat Isa a.s. When we tell them that we believe in Jesus, we say that he was the Messiah, we believe in his miraculous birth, we believe in his many miracles. In my country, my people, the people who are ruling us, they are thinking that we are trying to curry favor with them, we are trying to be nice to them, that if we say a few good words about the Jesus, maybe they might say a few good words about our Holy Prophet Muhammad which is not the case, which would be hypocrisy. 
we have to show them the Quran and we make them to see and we read it to them and explain to them and they bite their fingers. Metaphorically, they bite their fingers and say, look, we were thinking that this was just the opposite. And if they read this and I show them, demonstrate to them that this birth of Jesus as narrated in the Holy Quran is a nobler and a sublimer version of his birth than anything to be found anywhere. Because when this good news was given to Mary, we read in the Holy Quran, she says, She says, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? Physically, sexually. In other words, she had no relationship with any man, and how is she going to have a child? And the answers to that, as we find in the Holy Quran, said, Even so, Allah creates what He will. Whenever he decrees a matter, Whenever he decrees a matter, if he wants to do anything, he merely wills it and the thing comes into being. We said this is the Muslim concept of the birth of Jesus. For God to create a Jesus without a human father, just like that. If he wants to create a million Jesuses without father and without mother, just like that. If he wants to create universes, millions and billions of them, just like that. Whenever he decrees a matter, he merely says to it, be and it is. Now, this we have not shared with our fellow countrymen in South Africa. It seems like a novel thing to them. And the rest of the world also, we have failed miserably in presenting the Quran to the unbeliever. In South Africa, we have started translating this book into Zulu, the language of the majority of the sons of the soil, the Africans. There are some 7 million Zulus in my part of the country, 7 million, the biggest number of people. They are like what the Quraysh were in Arabia. These people are among the Africans, the Zulus. So we have translated the Quran into Zulu. We have translated the Holy Quran into Afrikaans, which is the language of the ruling race. And this was all done by the help of the Islamic courts and affairs of Doha, Qatar. They helped us, alhamdulillah. And their help has gone to such great extent that we have been able to do all these things. And I urge upon Muslims everywhere that they take up the Quran and read it to our brethren, our fellow countrymen, our visitors, our tourists, our uh, expatriates. Read it to them, make it available to them, let them see the Quran for themselves. Because they have some mysterious ideas, mystic ideas about us. They don't know what is happening in the masjid. They don't know what we really stand for. They don't know what the Quran really says. And this volume that the, has been produced in your, in your country here has been most useful because this one is a unique translation that this man, Yusuf Ali, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, Allama Yusuf Ali, uh, some 50 years ago he did this job and he has been able to arrange for us such fantastic system that you read the, the verse of the Quran and you have the translation side by side so you can also, the Arab can also improve his English and a very comprehensive index at the back of the Quran and this index puts everything on your fingertips anything you want to you know about Jesus, open J and under Jesus you'll find a dozen different references you want to know about Moses, under M you find Moses you want to know about marriage, about divorce, everything on your fingertips you can refer to it in two ticks may Allah bari ta'ala, you know, make it possible for you to have access to this book of God and use it for the propagation of Islam. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Eidun sa'idun, yawmun farhanun, yawmun jameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Ahmed ibn Saifuddin. May Allah bless this Eid for you. Enjoy this occasion with praise and thanks to Almighty. Happy Eid for all. Soothing verses, awakening contents. Unlock your hearts. Let us start to reflect and interact with the glorious Quran through simple and interactive grammar exercises.
هو هم أنت أنتم أنا نحن Explore the secrets of success that exist in the blessed lines of the Holy Quran. Using what you recite every day and night, learn 250 words that occur 55,000 times or 70% words of the Quran. Let's understand the Quran. Let's join Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim in Let's Understand the Quran. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Allah SWT said, Allah SWT said, Kuntum khayru umma ukhrijat alinnas. Yasir Fazaga. That you were the best of nations erected for the goodness of other people. Uplift your faith. Expand your horizon. Allah is warning the Muslims. You straighten your lines and you stand shoulder to shoulder and no gaps between you and your brother. Salim Al-Amri. Otherwise, Allah will turn your hearts against one another. With clear guidance. Allah said he would try us and test us with fear, hunger. Dr. Bilal Phillips. But give glad tidings to those who are patient. Mold your character on the path of the Quran and Sunnah in Faith Horizons every Sunday to Friday at 5.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Explore the wisdom balance of Islamic law and the genius of Muslim jurists who distilled the essence of the law into short statements of potent meaning. Potent meaning. So join me, Riyaz Ansari, for a survey of Islamic legal maxims. Appreciate the accountability of Islamic laws against all manner of corrupt practices in Islamic legal maxims with Riyaz Ansari every Saturday at 9 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 10 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Its time is very precious. This life is a gift from Allah. Utilize this gift for here and hereafter. Enjoy this gift in the light of the Quran and Hadith. Enjoy Islam with us, Zain and Dawood. Enjoying Islam with Zain and Dawood, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In South Africa, where I come from, in that ocean of Christianity, we have to present Islam, as Allah Bari Ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, say, so invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. And with beautiful preaching, and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. And this tartib, this method, this approach, that we have developed in South Africa, which we believe is Quranic, speaking to a people according to their own background and experience. And the majority of the people we come across are people with a background of the Bible, what they say, the Holy Bible of the Christians, the Holy Bible, this is the background. So whenever we want to approach them, when we want to talk to them, they say, my Bible says this, or my Bible says that, my Bible says this, or my Bible says that. So because of their knowledge of the Bible, they are, the bulk of the people, are one book professors. They know only about the Bible. So what we have to do, and which we are doing in South Africa, we have published books under the title, What the Bible Says About Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Christ in Islam, Jesus Christ in the House of Islam, what is his position? Now, we give references from the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible, which is common to both the Jews and the Christians. And we say, look, the Holy Prophet Muhammad was foretold in your own book. So they say, where? 
This we get our cue, our direction from the Holy Quran, where Allah says, Ula araitun in kana min indillah. He says, do they not see this book, the Quran, whether it be from Allah? Ula araitun in kana min indillah. Wa kafartun bihi, and they disbelieve in it. Wa shahida shahidun min bani Israel ala mislihi. When a witness from among the children of Israel, from the Bani Israel, bore witness of one like him. One like him. Now, who is this witness from among the Bani Israel who testified, who prophesied, who made basharat about the coming of our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They say, we haven't got anything like that in our book. This is a tall claim made by the Muslims. There's something in our book. There is nothing in our book. So we have to refer to them, and we refer to them in the first portion of the Bible called the Torah, the Pentateuch. There are five books attributed to the Holy Prophet Moses. This is not really the Torah, but the Christians and the Jews, they say, this is the Torah. We say in that fifth book of this five books, called the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, it says, I will raise them up a prophet. I, God Almighty talking, he said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, like you, like Moses. The Quranic verse. The Bible says, Mithlaka. He says, like unto thee, like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now we say, who is that prophet? Mithlaka, like you. And this verse, you know, when it is quoted in Arabic, in Arabic, from the Arabic Bible, produced by the Christians, from the Bible societies, we are able to buy these Bibles in a thousand different languages. I had to purchase one in Arabic to learn this, to see how does it read in Arabic. And I read it, and I learned it. It says, Ukimu lahum, I'm quoting the Bible now. Ukimu lahum nabiyam min wasati ikhwatihim mislaka. Ukimu lahum nabiyam min wasati ikhwatihim mislaka. Fa'aj'alu kalami fi famihi. فَيَكَلَّمَهُمْ بِكُلِّ مَا أُسِيهِ بِهِ وَيَكُونُ أَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ الَّذِي لَا يَسْمَوْ لِكَلَامِ يَتَكَلَّمُ بِهِ بِإِسْمِ أَنَا أُطَالِبُهُ That, and it shall come to pass, that whosoever will not hearken unto my word, Allah Bari Ta'ala is saying, that when he, that prophet who comes, like Moses, speaking in my name, he said, I will require it of him. In the Catholic Bible, the words are stronger. He says, I will take revenge, vengeance from him. Allah Bari Ta'ala in the Christian Bible, he's promising vengeance, revenge. Anybody who will not hearken unto my message, which that prophet will speak in my name, he says, I will take revenge. Now we ask, who is that prophet? So they say, Jesus. So we question, how is Jesus like Moses? And we present our case, and we have produced a booklet. The booklet that, who is this prophet like Moses? I show it to you. Here. Yeah. This booklet here, this is what the Bible says about Muhammad. Here we give you the Quranic verse and the tafsir by using the Bible and show more than 15 different reasons why this prophecy, this basharat in the verse that I have quoted, that it does not refer to Jesus Christ, but it refers to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu In that we do not mean, we do not claim, we do not say that Jesus was not the Messiah. We say he was the Messiah. And there are a hundred prophecies about his coming. But this one in particular, Deuteronomy 18.18, refers to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, and it does not refer to Jesus. And it is doing a beautiful job. And this booklet is to be translated into the Zulu language, into the Afrikaans language. And we learn this, like for example, this very verse. I learned it in Arabic because I had a motive. And the motive was, long before this turmoil in Lebanon, I had an aspiration to go to Lebanon and speak to the Lebanese Christians. And if I could quote in Arabic, I coming from South Africa, though I read the Quran and I am able to learn and memorize certain words and expressions which I'm giving meaning from the translation, I do not know Arabic as a language, unfortunately. I'm ashamed of it, that I do not know Arabic as a language. But when I quote this, to the respective language group, in his language, in his mother tongue. I can see the impact that it has, which in a foreign language it doesn't hold. So I learned in Arabic with the idea of going to Lebanon and talking to the Arab Christians and 
proposing these verses to him and reasoning with them. In English, of course, I'll deliver my lecture, but quoting the verses in Arabic. Then I wanted to go to Israel, talking to the Jews, so I learned it in Hebrew. Amazing, you know. I learned it in Hebrew. This is Navi Akim Lahim Mikarev Achayhim Kamocha Vinatati Before Vidibir. I quote it in Hebrew. I quote it in Afrikaans. I quote it in Zulu. I quote it in a dozen different languages. This is my hobby, my pastime, that whenever I go to a new country, I try to get a smattering of that language that I can win the hearts and minds of the people by delivering this message of Islam to them. So, in this verse, it says that Prophet will come speaking in my name. And this is so beautifully demonstrated from the Quran. In this Quran especially, I open from the right at the end, where we have all the small surahs. The small surahs of the Quran, beginning, Kul a'udhu bin nas, Kul a'udhu bil farak, Kul huwa Allah, tabbat yada. And I open the page, for example, here. I open the page, beginning with surah nas, surah nas, and so it begins. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Next page. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Next page. Bismillahir Rahman. Every, every chapter of the Holy Quran from the, begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. It's amazing. It's amazing that every chapter, every page from the end, if you start showing it to the Christian and the Jew, he said, look, every page begins in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And the Bible says that it will come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my word, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. In whose name is Muhammad speaking? He is speaking. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. And this is a fulfillment of a prophecy to the letter, to the T. And if we can only demonstrate to our fellow countrymen and our visitors and our tourists and our fellow workers, inshallah, you will be able to do a job of work far more readily, far more effectively, if you can present the Quran to them. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salah is your appointment with Allah. Salah is the safe haven of the believer. Salah is your gateway to happiness. Salah is the wish of the deceased. So join me for Salah Revisited and discover what you've been missing out on. Understand the remarkable guidelines that help in making our Salah rewarding and acceptable in Salah Revisited every Sunday at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Oh, shit, I'm gonna throw you down.
throw you down right into the ground. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. For so many years you've been pestering me, whispering and snickering in my ear. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. On this blessed day, you pale and weak, hiding in the corner, filled with grief. Cause people come a marching, praising our love, casting you right out of their hearts. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down, throw you down right into the ground. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down, throw you down right into the ground. You've been causing trouble since time began. A snake in the garden, you tricked the first man. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Eidun Saeedun, Yawmun Farhanun. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Asim Luqman Al Hakim. For all of us, may Allah make this Eid. A happy one. We are not addicted to dawah. Addiction implies a short term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in dawah ilallah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through dawah ilallah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 1 a.m. Saudi Arabia and 2 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. <laughs>